By solid state, I assume you are talking about sodium? Why are you even talking about lithium? You should compare Al to Na as it now seems either can be made into solid state. That comment shows up in the previous video we made that solid state batteries are mentioned in, and it highlights a bigger problem in today's EV discussion. Many people are mixing up battery chemistry with battery design, and that confusion makes it harder to understand what Tesla is actually working toward. So, when Tesla talks about solid state batteries for 2026, what are we really talking about? Is solid state automatically sodium? Could aluminum based batteries even make sense in this conversation? And which of these technologies is realistically closer to mass production? Not in theory, but in Tesla's factories. That's what we're breaking down today. Before we dive in, if you want clear, practical breakdowns like this, subscribe and turn on notifications. We're closing in on 22,111 subscribers, and every new subscriber helps push this channel toward deeper, more data-driven coverage. What to know about solid-state batteries, design first, chemistry second. Before comparing aluminum and sodium, we need to reset one key idea. Solid-state does not mean sodium. Solid-state simply means the battery uses a solid electrolyte instead of a liquid one. That's it. Traditional lithium-ion batteries use liquid electrolytes that operate safely between roughly 0 degrees Celsius and 45 degrees Celsius. Outside that range, they require heavy cooling and safety systems. Solid-state electrolytes can operate at higher temperatures, often 60 degrees Celsius to 100 degrees Celsius, depending on the material, which reduces thermal management needs. But here's the critical part. Solid state is a design layer. Chemistry comes on top of it. That means solid state batteries can be built using different ions. Lithium-based systems, sodium ion systems, aluminum ion systems. They are not the same thing, and they are not at the same stage of development. Let's start with sodium. Sodium ion batteries are already being produced at commercial scale in liquid electrolyte form. Current sodium ion cells typically deliver 140 to 180 watt hours per kilogram, compared to 250 to 300 watt hours per kilogram for Tesla's lithium based packs. That's a clear disadvantage for vehicle range. However, sodium has three major advantages cost, availability, and safety. Sodium carbonate costs roughly $150 to $200 per metric ton while lithium carbonate has fluctuated between $10,000 and $70,000 per metric ton over the past few years. That price stability matters for mass production. When sodium ion chemistry is paired with solid-state electrolytes, several problems improve at once. Sodium ions move more easily through certain ceramic and polymer solid electrolytes than lithium ions do. This reduces interface resistance and lowers degradation over time. From a manufacturing perspective, sodium-based solid-state cells can often be produced using modified versions of existing lithium-ion equipment. Now compare that to aluminum. Aluminum ion batteries use Al-3 plus ions, which carry three times the charge of lithium or sodium ions. In theory, this allows very high volumetric energy density. Aluminum metal is also extremely cheap typically around $2,000 to $2,500 per metric ton, and globally abundant. But the physics are far less forgiving. Aluminum ions move very slowly through solid electrolytes due to their high charge density. This leads to low power output, poor cycle life, and severe stress at the electrode-electrolyte interface. Most aluminum ion solid-state prototypes today struggle to exceed 500 stable charge cycles, compared to 1,500 to 3,000 cycles for mature lithium-ion cells. More importantly, aluminum-ion solid-state batteries are still confined to laboratory-scale cells. There is no demonstrated pathway to multi-gigawatt-hour production using current battery manufacturing lines. This is why Tesla's near-term solid-state discussions, even when unofficial, align far more closely with sodium than aluminum. Sodium-based solid-state batteries are not ready to replace lithium in long-range vehicles. 
but they are close enough to existing production methods to be scaled for cost-sensitive applications. Aluminum-ion solid-state batteries, by contrast, remain a long-term research concept rather than a 2026 manufacturing candidate. That distinction between what can be built and what merely looks promising is the core of this entire debate. Aluminum versus sodium. Which one Tesla can actually manufacture at scale? Now that we understand solid state is a design layer, not a chemistry, the question becomes, which ion system can Tesla realistically manufacture at scale in 2026? Let's start with production constraints. Tesla's battery factories are optimized for high volume output, measured in gigawatt hours per year. The 4,680 cells currently produced in Fremont and Grünheide achieve roughly 100 to 120 gigawatt hours per year in full-scale operation, with plans to reach 200 gigawatt hours per year by the late 2020s. Any new solid-state chemistry must fit within this production reality. Sodium-ion solid-state batteries have several advantages here. Sodium cathode materials are relatively easy to process and compatible with existing coating, drying, and stacking equipment. Industrial-grade sodium is abundant and cheap, as noted earlier, roughly $150 to $200 per ton for sodium carbonate. That translates into a raw material cost per kilowatt hour roughly 30 to 40 percent lower than lithium, assuming similar energy density. From a throughput perspective, Sodium solid-state cells can leverage incremental modifications to Tesla's current assembly lines. Using standard calendaring, coating, and lamination processes, Tesla could realistically achieve 5 to 10 gigawatt hours per year per line in pilot production within 18 to 24 months. Scaling to 50 to 60 gigawatt hours per year across multiple lines appears plausible by 2026 to 2027 for entry-level vehicles or stationary energy storage applications. Aluminum ion, however, presents much stiffer challenges. First, the AL3 plus ion moves sluggishly through solid electrolytes, requiring thicker electrodes or higher operating temperatures to achieve usable power. Thicker electrodes reduce volumetric energy density, meaning you need more material for the same energy. Even under optimistic assumptions, Producing a 1 gigawatt hour per year line of aluminum ion solid state batteries would demand substantial redesign of electrode coating, electrolyte application, and thermal management systems, essentially a new factory. Furthermore, lab scale aluminum ion cells demonstrate a cycle life under 500 charges, compared with 1,500 to 3,000 cycles for sodium or lithium systems. That alone makes aluminum impractical for automotive applications where Tesla targets 150,000 to 250,000 miles of usable life per battery pack. Material costs also tell the story. Aluminum metal is cheap at roughly $2,200 per ton, but the extra processing needed to fabricate ally-on electrodes, combined with higher rejection rates in lab-scale prototypes, often 20 to 30 percent, drives the effective cost per kilowatt hour well above $200 per kilowatt hour far above Tesla's target for mainstream EVs. In contrast, sodium solid-state designs could plausibly hit $120 to $140 per kilowatt hour at scale, making them attractive for lower-cost EVs and energy storage applications. Tesla's production strategy has always prioritized manufacturability over peak theoretical performance. The company's 4680 program demonstrated that increasing energy density by 10 to 15 percent is meaningless if throughput and cycle stability are compromised. Following the same logic, sodium-ion solid-state batteries are far closer to factory-ready than aluminum-ion solid-state batteries in 2026. It is also worth noting that Tesla tends to move incrementally rather than jumping to entirely new chemistries. Pilot production lines for sodium solid-state prototypes could be implemented using modified lithium-ion lines, allowing Tesla to gradually increase scale without halting existing 4680 production. Aluminum ion would require ground-up retooling, with uncertain results, effectively a 5-10 to 10 year research horizon, 
not a 2026 reality. Finally, supply chain reliability favors sodium. Sodium carbonate and sodium salts are globally abundant, with multiple suppliers in Asia, Europe, and North America. Aluminum is also abundant, but the specialty salts and electrode formulations for Allion solid state are still experimental. Any attempt at mass production would be subject to bottlenecks in electrode chemistry, electrolyte synthesis, and quality control, risks Tesla tends to avoid when planning factory ramp-ups. What Tesla's silence on solid state really signals? One of the most curious things about Tesla's approach to solid state batteries is the company's near total silence. Unlike some competitors who boast breakthroughs or hype new chemistries, Tesla hasn't officially confirmed a solid state production timeline for 2026. That silence is intentional, and it tells us more than any press release could. Tesla's strategy has always been factory first, announcement second. The 4680 rollout illustrates this clearly. The company optimized the design and production lines before giving a detailed technical update. Solid state is no different. By staying quiet, Tesla avoids unrealistic expectations, investor pressure, and unnecessary comparisons to competitors. The silence also reflects practical production constraints. Tesla likely has pilot lines for testing solid electrolytes with sodium ion chemistry, possibly at sub-1 gigawatt hours per year scale. This allows the company to evaluate real-world electrode stability, interface resistance, and cycle life without committing publicly to an uncertain timeline. Publicly claiming a 2026 launch would be risky because scaling from lab scale 10 to 100 ampere hour cells to 5 to 10 gigawatt hours per year is still a massive technical challenge. Another signal comes from Tesla's material choices and supply chain moves. In recent years, Tesla has invested in multiple sodium precursor suppliers and diversified its aluminum sourcing, but production tooling still emphasizes lithium-ion infrastructure. This suggests Tesla is exploring sodium-based solid-state batteries as a transitional technology, rather than aluminum-ion as a near-term solution. The company is preparing the ground for cost reductions and risk mitigation, rather than chasing lab-scale breakthroughs. Tesla's silence also aligns with market positioning strategy. The company must balance entry-level vehicle affordability with performance for premium models. Sodium-based solid-state batteries could first appear in lower-cost vehicles, achieving $120 to $140 per kilowatt-hour battery cost targets, while maintaining reasonable cycle life around 1,500 to 2,000 charges. Aluminum ion, by contrast, remains experimental and far from meeting Tesla's range and lifetime expectations. Finally, Tesla's quiet approach minimizes hype-driven backlash. Overpromising on aluminum ion solid state, which currently struggles with ion mobility and cycle stability, would invite skepticism from analysts, competitors, and the EV community. By focusing on incremental production-aligned progress with sodium-based prototypes, Tesla can control expectations, test viability in real vehicles, and iterate without public pressure. In summary, Tesla's silence is not indecision, it is deliberate. It signals that the company is focused on practical, scalable, solid-state solutions, most likely sodium-based, while aluminum ion remains a long-term research horizon. By 2026, we may see pilot production and initial vehicle integration with sodium solid-state cells. But don't expect aluminum solid-state batteries in mainstream Tesla vehicles anytime soon. Now we want to hear from you. Which chemistry do you think Tesla should focus on first, aluminum or sodium? Would you buy a Tesla with sodium-based solid-state batteries if it meant lower cost but slightly shorter range? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. The most interesting insights might be featured in our next video. If you found this breakdown useful, make sure to like the video, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you don't miss Tesla updates and battery analysis from Auto Gear Shift.